In this presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit more about philosopher Paul Grice's observation that participants in conversations follow certain maxims or general rules of conduct that help conversations, essentially cooperative endeavors, succeed. When you are engaged in a conversation, you assume most of the time that the people you're talking about understand and follow these rules as well. The necessity that we cooperate gives rise to a number of maxims or general rules of conduct. These are quantity, say as much as is needed but not more. The maxim of quality, be truthful. The maxim of relation, be relevant. And the maxim of manner, be clear. Imagine if we didn't believe that the majority of people were following these general rules of conduct most of the time. Imagine you're on your way to class and a friend asked you, can I buy you coffee? And you asked, well, what time is it? And your friend, an your friend answered, my watch says two o'clock. Now, you assume that your friend is not leaving out something important, like his watch is always 30 minutes behind. You assume that your friend is not lying and that his watch doesn't actually say 2.30. Your friend's contribution is clearly relevant and it was brief and orderly, but imagine when you asked what time is it, he had instead answered, it's sunny out. That doesn't seem very relevant to me. Or when you asked for the time, he answered, it's no less than five minutes past the time, but no more than ten minutes before that it was the last time when I was walking to class and asked if you had time for a coffee. I don't think that would be very clear. Now, your friend obviously follows these maxims as well. Otherwise, you'd have found him very annoying and ceased being friends a long time ago. He may not know these maxims explicitly, but he certainly understands them at some level. He makes it clear that he understands them because of the way he keeps apologizing when he comes close to violating one of them. When he goes on too long, he says, to cut a long story short. Or when he isn't quite sure of whether the story is true or false, he says, as far as I know. When he's about to say something unconnected with what you've been talking about, he says, I know this is off topic, but, and when he isn't as brief as he'd like to be, he says, I hate to keep harping on this, but we're some other kind of apology for going on and on. He, he apologizes his, for his failure to observe the maxim of manner. All of these little hedges or apologies demonstrate an understanding of the maxim, even at the point where he may be at risk of violating it. Your friend is a good communicator. Maybe that's why you like him. Okay, so in the book Spy the Lie, a CIA interrogator, this is a, a, a wonderful book about how to tell when other people are lying. Uh, a CIA interrogator is home relaxing with his feet up on the coffee table after a long day of interrogating. He notes that his son is about to engage in some relaxation as well and asks, do you have any homework? And the son answers, we had a substitute today, a substitute teacher today. Now the father interprets his son's answer as producing an implicature, as it wasn't a direct answer to the question. He remembers his own school days when substitute teachers gave little work or any of any significance, as they didn't really know the students or have much authority or the confidence that they'd be back to check the homework the next day. So the father interp interprets the implicatum as being, we don't have any homework. The father takes that as an answer and the son starts heading upstairs. And then the father remembers that he's a CIA interrogator and he calls the son back. And he says, do you have any homework? And the son breaks down and confesses that the substitute teacher that they had today gave an enormous amount of homework. Now the son was violating the maxim of quantity by not providing enough information. The father thought that he was producing an implicature by flouting the maxim of relation and we'll discuss flouting of maxims in the next clip in this series. What's important here 
is that maxims can be violated. In this case, uh, in this case, the maximum of quantity, which requires you to tell all the information required and not more, was violated by a sun resulting, resulting or was violated by the sun, resulting in what his father called a lie of omission. If the sun had told an outright lie, he would have been violating the maximum of quality. If he had started talking about something that happened at school and hoped his father forgot the question, he would have violated the maximum of relation. And if he had made his answer intentionally confusing, he would have violated the maxim of manner. The important thing to note is that he's violating the maxims because he's intending to uh, deceive. He's breaking the general rules of conduct. Let's take another situation. Your partner comes home with tickets for a comic convention. Not enjoying comic conventions for some reason, you ask, how much did those tickets cost? Your partner could remind you that you agreed to keep separate bank accounts at the start of the relationship, or your partner could admit that the tickets cost $300 because they include a special uh, add-on feature with tickets to a boxing match between comic legends Frank Miller and Alan Moore. But for some reason, your partner isn't so honest and straightforward. Instead, he answers, they were on sale. Now, he's telling you more and less than you asked for. You didn't ask if they were on sale. You asked the price. He's violated the maximum of quantity, which tell him that he should make his contribution as informative as is required, and not make his contribution more informative than is required. Now imagine that instead he answers $25. He's lying. Remember that they had the expensive boxing match option and it cost $300. Okay, so he's violated the maxim of quality by not telling the truth regarding the cost. The maximum of quality says that he should try to make his contribution one that is true and not say that which he believes to be false and not even say that for which he lacks adequate evidence. So this is pretty dishonest of him. Despite his charming interest in comic books, get a new partner because this one's a liar. It would have seemed a little less dishonest if he tried to distract you by proposing, let's go out for dinner tonight. This has nothing to do with your question, so he's violated the maxim of relation, which requires him to be relevant. Finally, being confusing is always an option. It's an option that works for many academics when they have little of substance to say. He could say something like, they cost a fraction of my salary, though probably a much bigger fraction of the salary of the woman who sold them to me. Now he's saying a lot, but he's not saying much of significance. He's being intentionally confusing. And he's violating the maxim of manner that says he should avoid obscurity of expression, avoid ambi- Ta-ta for now.